it's important to study history um, so, so that you don't get complacent about your own time, so that you realize that, that some of the issues and, and some of the issues that you're facing um, have been presenting themselves uh, to people your age earlier on in time um, with, with different uh, um, ways of dealing with them, of course, uh, slightly different choices, but in many cases the same issues. So a lot of what we're facing today is not new uh, and, and it helps you uh, be aware of the complexity of, of society, of culture, of, of issues of, of citizenship, of choices, um, and that's th those are reasons why studying history is, is important, uh, apart from being fun. They did say that uh, Kawan had drowned. That's what they said. And that they're waiting on a toxicology report. Um, and they said that the toxicology re report can uh, take up to eight weeks. Family members of a 15-year-old boy found dead near Lorville, not buying the cause of death in the case. Family members say they were told Kuan Charles drowned. Now they want an independent autopsy. Kuan Charles was reported missing on Friday, October 30th in Baldwin. Family members say he left his home with a 17-year-old friend and his mother without permission. Charles was found dead in a rural area off Ed Broussard Road near Lorville three days later. Three's on the street tonight. Katie Easter joins us live with the update from family. Katie. Well, earlier tonight, I spoke to a family member here at the Public Library in Lafayette, and they say they have more questions for the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office, but they aren't getting very many answers. But they have not, they still have not showed us exactly where Kawan was and what creek by, I mean, by what field. We don't know. We can't even go and put up a little cross or something in the area where he was found at. We don't know. They're being very discreet. Family spokesperson Selena Charles says one reason she and other family members don't believe Kwan drowned is a graphic photo of Kwan's body circulating on social media. His face is disfigured. So there's some explaining that needs to be done there. His face is disfigured. We have no answers. But we're going to get them. But we have no answers at this point. The family has retained attorney Ron Haley. They were told things such as he's probably at a football game, probably here, there, or anywhere else. And we don't know if those delays could have contributed to his death. When there is a missing child, we know that the most critical moments are when you first call law enforcement and to know that that person, that kid, is, is missing. I reached out to the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office and they said there was no new information at this time. Reporting live, threes on the street, Katie Easter, KTC, TV3. Lord, he loved me and I loved him. A 15-year-old boy found dead in a field. His family wants answers about what happened. The boy's body was found in that field near Lorville on Monday, three days after he was reported missing from his home in Baldwin. Right now, investigators in Iberia Parish aren't saying too much about the case. And as Katie Easter reports, the boy's family has a lot of questions. Family and friends of Quan Charles gathered outside the family home to remember him, including his heartbroken mother. I've been crying throughout the day. I wake up in the middle of the night crying. I'm missing my son. I'm missing his smile. I'm missing his little jokes. Roxanne Nelson says she hasn't been told very much about how her son died. My son has a big knot on his head, so it's obvious that someone hit him in the head with something. Family members say Kwan was last seen leaving his house with a friend and his friend's mom. I want the lady that can't get my son without my permission and his dad's permission to be held accountable. That's right. You cannot just take somebody's son, bring him to your house, and not be held accountable for them because he was in her custody. So now he's dead. He left here alive and well, and now he's dead when he went to Lowerville to her house. He was uh, found dead under mysterious circumstances, and we just want justice for him, and um, we just want um, a thorough and honest investigation with uh, our very parish sheriff's department. In Baldwin, Katie Easter, KTC, TV3.
15 year old boy who was found dead near Lorville says they have evidence that suggests foul play was involved. Kawan Bobby Charles was reported missing October 30th in Baldwin. His family says he left home without permission with a 17 year old friend and that friend's mother. His body was found three days later near Lorville. The family tells us they were told by investigators that Bobby drowned, but they don't believe that, citing a graphic photo of his body that's circulating online. Three's on the street tonight. Iman Boyd joins us live from Iberia Parish. And Iman, why does the family believe there's foul play and what are investigators saying? Well, investigators here at the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office aren't giving too much information about this case, but says an autopsy is pending. But family members say a recorded phone call shows evidence of foul play as activists suggest that Bobby's death could have been racially motivated. The disappearance and death of Kawan Bobby Charles has caught the attention of activist groups like Stand Black, which released a recording of a phone conversation between Bobby's mother and an unidentified woman. The woman on the other end claims the mother and son Bobby was last with was high on drugs and later used bleach to clean their car. I think that this shows that at the very least, potentially that these people played a part in the cover up of whatever happened to Bobby. I think you could definitely draw that conclusion, if not something more heinous than that. Deputies say they have interviewed people in connection with the case and collected physical evidence. Since Bobby's death, a GoFundMe account has raised more than $79,000. That GoFundMe also shows a graphic photo organizers say is of Bobby's body. It's pictured next to a photo of Emmett Till, a Chicago boy who was lynched while visiting family in Mississippi in the 1950s. Possible evidence exposes what could have happened to 15-year-old Kawhi Bobby Charles. In the recently released recording, you hear the mother of a teen talking to another parent who is friends with the family's last scene with Kawhi. The friend's mother explains what her son told her. He says the family was high on mushrooms. They picked up your son, him and his mother, and the stepdad were all tripping on mushrooms. The ones that are poisonous, they make you trip out. Also in the recording, the friend reveals what he had heard about the location of Charles's body. Um, from what I could understand, he told my son that they found your son's body in a sugarcane field behind the house. And Haley says Kawan's body will be brought to Texas on Wednesday for an independent autopsy. Three's on the street live in New Iberia. Iman Boy, KTC, TV3. Reports of the acquittal made front page headlines across the United States and set off an international firestorm. The life of a Negro in Mississippi, one European paper observed, is not worth a whistle. From Boston to Los Angeles, black people packed meeting halls and spilled into the streets to hear Mamie Till tell her story. And what I saw was a shame before God and man. And the way the jury chose to believe the ridiculous stories of those defense attorneys. I just can't go into detail to tell you the silly things, the stupid things that were brought up as probabilities and they swallowed it like a fish swallows a hook. Just anything, just any excuse to put these two men. Protected from further prosecution, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam sold their story to a reporter from Look Magazine for $4,000. Their account appeared just four months after the acquittal. In 1955, while visiting family and money in Mississippi, Emmett Till was falsely accused of making advances on a white woman named Carolyn Donham. Four days later, Donham's husband, Roy Bryant, and his half-brother, J.W. Millam, kidnapped the 14-year-old. He was beaten viciously and then shot in the head. The boy's mutilated body was found in the Tallahatchie River, weighed down by a 75-pound cotton gin fan that had been strapped to his neck with barbed wire. Despite being identified by eyewitnesses and admitting to the kidnapping, Bryant and Millam were acquitted by an all-white jury. They later confessed to the murder in an interview, but weren't retried. Till, uh, a, a terrible, um, you know, 
killing that really many people credit with starting the civil rights movement. Uh, he was uh, killed in Money, Mississippi after having whistled at a white woman at a convenience store. He's a teenager, right? He was right? a teenager, 15 years old. Um, and it was in 1955, which is, it was earlier in the years, in the summer of the, in that, that December, the Montgomery bus boycotts began, Rosa Parks, and that's really where a lot of people think the civil rights movement hit its stride. But um, Emmett Till's mother showed his coffin in Chicago, open casket, showed his mutilated face. And we talk about the, pic the power of pictures now and then. That's really what kind of changed the whole flow of the civil rights movement when people saw the brutality that was carried out on this 15-year-old boy. Well, it was done with the testimony in a courtroom of an all-white jury. Uh, the, a 21-year-old woman was allegedly whistled at by Emmett Till, who bought some gum. Uh, she, uh, she went back, told her husband. Her husband and his brother went out and killed, or his brother-in-law went out and killed, got and killed uh, Emmett Till. Well, the testimony in the trial that took place that summer, uh, this woman, Carolyn Bryant, who was whistled at, who is now 83 years old, uh, gave some testimony that was not heard in front of the jury, but was heard in front of the courtroom, and then entered into the record of the trial, even though the jury didn't hear it, graphically said what this boy did to her and said to her. Now she's recanted. She has said that she didn't do it. Of course, Till is dead. Till's mother died in 2003. Uh, Milam and Bryant, who were acquitted of the crime, uh, died in, in uh, earlier, and now today she has said, you know, for for a book that she is uh, that she made up that entire testimony. Well, I'm glad she'll be prosecuted for uh, lying. Well, on the there road. is a statute of limitations um, that has expired unless it was murder, and she wasn't one of the murderers. She was uh, she was causal, and they don't even know where she is now. This was this, this interview was taken ten years ago and that she's kind of disappeared again. She was remarried twice since it happened. Anyway, yeah, and obviously what happened, the torture and the murder wouldn't be acceptable regardless. The fact that she said he whispered something profane at her, yeah. I'm sure it incensed the people who heard it. And it's the sort of thing, when you hear about this, you then think, well, in all these other cases where this happened, the numerous, countless other lynchings that happened was the same sort of thing going on. But regardless, from my point of the testimony, I mean, finding out that uh, after they, they tortured this guy, they murdered him, they were acquitted in less than one hour. Yeah. Absolutely insane, the history of our My reaction as a response to 60 years of Emmett being painted in bad light by her and her brother-in-law. And this is what I've been hoping for and wondering how it come about, the truth. And I have a different perspective about that than most people because they don't feel what I have felt for 60 years. Everywhere I go, I try to tell them what kind of person Emmett really was. And after he was killed by them, they made it seem that he got what he deserved the way they described him in the light that they put him. So you know how I felt. I don't have to tell you for someone coming out telling the truth. Historical sign marking where Emmett Till's body was found is now riddled with bullet holes. The damage was discovered last week in Tallahatchie County, Mississippi. A film student from North Carolina was scouting taping locations when he found the sign. He had been shot more than 40 times. Till was killed in 1955 while visiting family in Mississippi, allegedly for flirting with an older married white woman. Two men, the woman's husband and half-brother, confessed in a magazine interview that they kidnapped and beat the 14-year-old for shooting him and throwing his body in the Tallahatchie River. Both men were found not guilty for his death. The Emmett Till Interpretive Center had an online fundraiser to repair the sign, and as of Saturday morning, the fundraising goal was met. A member of the Emmett Till Memory Project said he wasn't surprised the site was targeted, saying civil rights markers provide a low-risk outlet for racism. joins us live outside the Iberia Parish Courthouse with more on a protest underway. And Katie, who's out there tonight? 
Several dozen people are here, including Bobby's family, people from the community, and several organizations, including one called Stand Black and The Village, and they are demanding a thorough investigation of the case. And now that demand is being echoed by ACLU of Louisiana, which put out a statement today in support of the Charles family. They say investigators have been slow to provide updates to the family about the case, and family members say they were told Bobby drowned, but they are not buying that, pointing to a graphic photo of his body that circulating online and so far we have not heard any updates from the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office and they are the ones who are handling the case at this time and now deputies say they have interviewed several people in collect and have collected physical evidence but so far no arrests have been made. Live in New Iberia, Katie Easter, KTC. In our day, certain economic proofs have become accepted as self-evident, a second bill of rights under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all, regardless of station or race or creed. The right of every family to a decent home, the right to adequate medical care, and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health, the right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age, sickness, accident, and unemployment, the right to a good education. And that's the terrible myth of organized society, that everything that's done through the established system is legal and that word has a powerful psychological impact it makes people believe that there is an order to life and an order to a system and that a person that goes through this order and is convicted has gotten all that is due him and therefore society can turn its conscience off and look to other things and other times. And that's the terrible thing about these past trials, is that they have this aura of legitimacy, this aura of legality. I suspect that better men than the world has known, and more of them, have gone to their death through a legal, legal system than through all the illegalities in the history of man. Six million people in Europe during the Third Reich, legal. Sacco Vanzetti, quite legal. The Haymarket defendants, legal. The hundreds of rape trials throughout the South, where black men were condemned to death, all legal. Jesus, legal. Socrates, legal. And that is the kaleidoscopic nature of what we live through here and in other places. Because all tyrants learn that it is far better to do this thing through some semblance of legality than to do it without that pretense. 